Uh, let's take a look at section 2.9, uh, floating point data types. And uh, we, we're looking, this is another way to store numbers. And so for this one, we're looking at storing real numbers. So we talked about int before, so integers uh, and, and storing storing ints. But uh, for this, we're going to look at, really, we need to store, now we need to store decimal places. So whether we have 12.45, uh, negative 3.8, uh, we, we need this to be included. So when, uh, when we're using an int, we, and we just had to store 12, no big deal, right? But now we need to, to have another way of storing this. Maybe these are, you know, maybe when you're looking at this, maybe this is $12.45. So this is significant. We need to have this on here. So we're going to look at uh, floating point. So there are different types, and uh, we'll see floats, uh, but for now, now, uh, I'd like to focus on doubles, okay? So um, we'll, we'll use long doubles later. And it just has to do with the, the size of it, how much uh, storage it takes. Uh, but what we're looking at here is uh, when you're talking about like significant different uh, digits that we'll store, uh, we can store seven with float, 16 for double. Um, and so this, this gives us a nice wide range for now. And since we're just starting out, uh, similar to, uh, you know, the whole numbers and, and using integers, and just using int uh, instead of the, the other variances of that. We'll do the same thing here, and we'll just use double for now. Won't take us long. We'll be playing around floats and, and all sorts of other stuff too. But anyway, so we'll focus on double for now. Okay. Um, and we'll also be focusing on storing them this way so that we're in, in decimal really notation, so fixed point. Uh, we won't mess much with uh, E notation yet. Uh, we'll deal with this later uh, but for now everything that we're we're going to be doing will uh, have fixed point uh, notation so and we'll try to adjust our programs and, and the outputs and uh, set things so that it it comes out that way so we'll talk about fixed and and how you how you can set that up so uh, we'll do that a little bit later um so anyway so we have uh we're using double um for all this kind of good stuff and uh you get to see how it works all right so let's take a look at an example all right so if we have uh, whether it's a literal or variable, we're, we're setting this up and we're going, hey, we want to go ahead and uh, if, if we set a floating point value, so something like this, 3.88, and we set this equal to an, and, and set it up as an int uh, variable, which is you know not what we want to do. Um, what will happen in the code is if you see this particular line right here, so we have um, int rainfall equals 3.88. All right, and then when we go with the output, and you won't get any errors or anything. This will, this will just you know go roll right through, and it'll function fine. Then you come down to the output, and when it says see out, and it's going to uh, print the value for rainfall. Uh, what will actually be printed will be dis it'll actually just show just a three, so it'll only display uh, just three. So it cuts off the 0.88, and what that is is truncation. So uh, whenever you you do something like this, where you're you're trying to, to set a you know a decimal piece here, so some type of floating point value, uh, e and set it equal to an int, it just truncates it, uh, chops it off. I put <laughs> chops off. I don't know. I was, I don't know, that's the way I look at it, uh, and just throws it away. And so if you were trying to do, uh, obviously you're losing data here, and so it can be significant. Uh, and if you're doing calculations, uh, you're storing uh, things as ints that should be doubles, uh, then you're going to come up with values that are incorrect and, and that are off. So um, you may be close, but depending on how many things you're calculating, you could end up being way off. So, uh, so you have to be really, really careful of that. So in order to fix that, what you might do instead of this line, int rainfall equals 3.88, instead the new way of doing this, we're going to use doubles, as I, I, I told you before. So, um, so we have double rainfall. So now we've changed this uh, particular, and I combine these into, to, into one uh, line here, one statement, these two statements. So anyway, so we have a double now. So rainfall defined or declared as a double. So floating point data type, and we're storing this as 3.88. So then if we were to say, see out rainfall, uh, it would actually display 3.88. So uh, very important that, uh, that you pay attention to that, um, the type of data that you're storing. You'll find you end up using uh, doubles quite a lot if you're doing calculations for things so that you can get a more accurate number. Okay, so let's take a look just really quickly at some, uh, I don't know, just a couple more examples. All right, so, uh, so if we have int number, and this looks very similar to the previous slide, right? Uh, so, and then the next thing says number equals 5.67 and C out number. Uh, the display will be, if you had to guess, uh, just straight up five. Okay, so this is what's going to print. 
truncating 0.67 here. So it chops it off, disappears, never to be seen again. Okay, so that's a, and not to say it goes away in your uh, in your code. Like in your code, it will still say number equals 5.67, but whenever we refer to number, it will only refer to it as five. All right, so to correct that, we do something like this. So double number, number equals 5.67, and we have our C out for our number here, and then it will display the correct 5.67 uh, floating point number. All right. So, um, kind of, a uh, kind of cool stuff. I don't know. You'll see you use those a lot. So anyway, okay, let's go ahead and go on to this and, uh, and take a look at this little, um, checkpoint here. So, uh, write a program that defines an integer variable named age and a double variable named weight. So store your age and weight I put in here lying, totally acceptable. So, um, this, yeah, these numbers are nowhere close to me, I guess down here. So anyway, we'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, so, uh, so you're storing those as literals uh, in your in your variables, and then the program should display these values on the screen in a manner similar to the following. So, in you know like a sentence form. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, let's see. I mean, of course, you're gonna start this out, you know, kind of the same old way. If you start out with that, uh, maybe have your comment lines above this saying what this is. Uh, but go ahead, and I'll leave this on the screen for now. Uh, pause the video and see if you can create this and get this output. Okay, so using variables. All right, rather than just a string to output this line, right? So this particular statement. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and then come back in a, in, as soon as you're done with it. All right, so here we are back and let's take a look at this particular problem. So starting out, you know, with our, our same basic stuff we're doing, that we've been doing, so including uh, input output stream library or using the standard namespace. Uh, and here's our, our main function. Uh, open this up and just to take a look, and this is one way of doing it. This is not the, uh, only way obviously uh, but setting this up here we have an int that's that's uh, named age and we are setting it at 26 here's our double uh, to store the weight so 168.5 so it stores it there and then here's some outputs uh, and I don't know I just did it like this and kept it all on the same screen but you can see these are all like complete statements uh, even though it's just one sentence but uh, but anyway so we have uh, you know my age my age is and then the variable the uh, you know the value for age comes in here and my weight is notice the spaces uh, to keep those in there and then we have weight here so it will bring in the stored value for weight and then pounds here returning zero in the end of the program so the output would give you the sentence that you saw a second ago so uh, down here so my age is 26 my weight is 168.5 pounds so hopefully you got that to work okay if not compare your code to this code see if you can uh, see you know what may have gone wrong uh, and uh, hopefully get get your code working okay all right, so once you've uh, once you've done that uh, for this particular section, you'll see uh, there is a video in in our book. So this is the link to the video for uh, uh, Tony's video. So uh, and you'll see he kind of walks through uh, this particular problem in the uh, book. Uses different numbers, but these are the numbers that are used with the video. So follow along, see if you can uh, code it with him and get it to work. Okay. And uh, that gives you just another one that you kind of have under your belt as you're playing with these. So trying to give you different examples you can you can play with and, and uh, mess with along the way. Okay, so our next problem, and you'll see uh, you'll see this in Canvas too as an actual assignment you'll turn in, uh, is we have this right here. So this uh, programming challenge 10, I believe. Uh, and I, again, these numbers are a little bit different, but uh, just to mix it up on you a little. Uh, so a car uses 16 gallons of gas after driving th uh, 312 miles. So write a program that calculates the number of miles per gallon the car got while on the trip and display the results on the screen. So and then there's a little hint on how you get miles per gallon. So it gives you the formula there. Remember we're using the forward slash to divide. So that's our divide symbol that we're, that we're using. And then this kind of gives you a little hint on getting started. Okay, so there's this one. And then after that, um, this goes right along with us, a uh, little section here too. So uh, another programming challenge in this. So we have, um, you're computing, what is this? A router program that computes the total sales tax on a $95 purchase. Uh, assume the state sales tax is 6.5, counties two, and display those and the totals on the screen. So uh, purchase price, state tax, county tax, and total tax amounts. Uh, 
on the screen. So, and then I guess you could do a grand total too, right? I mean, that just kind of makes sense. Um, adding those all up to see what it will cost you. And again, it, these numbers are a little bit different than uh, in the book, but it uh, gives, you, gives you something to mess with. So you see this in uh, in Canvas as well, all right? So uh, work on those uh, and uh, see if you can get them, get them both completed. And then when we start the next time, uh, I'll review these two programs before we do uh, other things, all right? So there we go.